Hey there, I'm Sam. Welcome to RD Insights episode 2. When to choose vacuum casting. Vacuum casting or uresin casting is a process similar to injection molding. The process begins with creating a silicon mold around the master model, followed by careful slicing, gating, and ventilation additions. The mold is then filled with a urethane based resin and cured under vacuum conditions to ensure good quality. For a more detailed breakdown of the vacuum casting process, you can find the video on our channel. Now let's uncover the key factors that will help you determine when to choose vacuum casting. First, quality. Vacuum casting is the prototyping products that need to approve production grade quality and demand structural validation. Second, market testing. Vacuum casting allows users to produce 1 to 20 cats from a single silicon mold, which enables customers to launch the first series of products for early market testing with minimum cost. Third, quick turnaround time. Vacuum casting at Rapid Direct takes just one week from the production of the master model to have finished products ready for shipment. This rapid prototyping capability ensures that you receive your functional prototypes promptly. Fourth, lower cost. When compared to other rapid prototyping processes such as reinjection molding, vacuum casting provides cost savings, particularly in mold making. Now that we have gained insights into the advantages of vacuum casting, it's time to dive into its limitations for a more comprehensive understanding. First, material limitations. Vacuum casting is well suited for various polyurethane and epoxy based casting reasons. However, it may not be suitable for working with some materials such as engineering grade, thermoplastics, or any types of metals. Second, mold limitations. Common mold materials include silicon rubber and polyurethane rubber. Silicon molds are more flexible and suitable for complex shapes with undercuts, but they may not provide the same level of fine details as metal molds. Third, shrinkage limitations. Shrinkage is a common challenge in vacuum casting, which may cause variations in part dimensions and affect the overall functionality of the product. At Rapid Direct, the minimum wall thickness for vacuum casting is 1.5 mm to 2.5 mm. For production limitations, vacuum casting is not the most suitable option for large scale manufacturing due to its relatively slower production efficiency. 5 application limitations. The materials used in vacuum casting, such as polyurethane resins, are generally not designed to withstand high temperatures. At elevated temperatures, this material may degrade, lose their mechanical properties, or even melt, making them unsuitable for high temperature environments. We have now come to the end of this video. We present a comparison table that outlines vacuum casting, injection molding, and 3D printing, which will help you make a better choice for your project. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to give it a like and share your thoughts in the comments. And make sure to subscribe to our channel to stay updated with future episodes. Bye-bye.